Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring my recommended ships for tier 9 ranked. Now, what you gotta keep in mind is that the upcoming tier 9 ranked uh, season will involve arms race. So that means there's gonna be a lot of specific, specific buffs that people will be fighting for, and some of those buffs will be extremely powerful. There's buffs that increase your DPM, your faster reload, faster torpedo reload, and there's buffs that increase your concealment. And uh, the arms race ranked gameplay involves fighting over multiple different caps on different positions all the time. It's basically non-stop capture, uh, capture the objective type of gameplay. So this naturally means that, well, first of all, DDs have increased value because they are the fastest, most stealthy ships. They can go pick up these buffs for the team. So DDs will automatically gain a lot of value. On the other hand, battleships lose a lot of value in this type of rank because, well, they are the clumsiest, the slowest. They struggle to get into these positions. And, uh, of course, they don't really have that good of a counter against any sort of torpedo play. And increased concealment means ability to torp from closer ranges and blah blah blah. It all steamrolls and having played a fair bit of arms race in multiple different ships, uh, the carry potential in both radar ships, uh, especially destroyers and radar cruisers, has been much higher than it is in any other game mode. So keep that in mind when you watch this commentary. Um, this is not some. This is not ranking the ships how they perform in random battles. This is ranking the ships how I expect them to form uh, perform in this upcoming arms race ranked game mode. It's limited to tier nine. And honestly, sometimes in the past I've done so that I've split them up into multiple different tiers, but mm, it usually gets so convoluted and so hard that uh, this time I'm doing it very simply. Uh, we have three different sets, three different uh, places where I will place a ship. It's either a bad ship, a ship that I don't expect to perform at all in ranked, or it's an average ship, which could go either way. You can have a bad or a good performance depending on how the how the match turns out but usually they're going to be kind of middle of the pack not a ship that you will particularly hate seeing on your team but not something that will make you that happy either and then i have the top picks which are the ships that i expect to perform well pretty much always regardless of how the match starts out because well once again arms race is kind of snowballing if one team ends up winning a lot of early capture point objectives they get a lot of buffs and the match becomes a lot harder because the enemy has better concealment, they have better DPM, they have, they are healing, like, um, it tends to snowball a fair bit. So having an early game impact is very important in arms race. Right, starting off, I'm gonna start with the bad ships. Ships I don't expect to perform no matter what. Even if you get all the buffs, you're probably still not gonna be as strong as the competition. And the first one here is the Friedrich der Grosse. It's clumsy, it's massive, it's got garbage concealment, yes it's got Hydro against Torps, but it still doesn't save it from all the damage it will take, because even if you see the Torps coming, you won't necessarily be able to dodge them. And it can't really deal that well with punishing destroyers either, because, well, it only has 8 guns, and German HE isn't gonna win any prizes, and the terrible firing angles, honestly, there's a lot of things bad about this, it just goes in the bad section. Another ship that goes into the bad section is the Ibuki. I cannot recommend the Ibuki for any sort of ranked play. The one thing that the Ibuki does well is, or fairly well, is mid to long range HE spam. But there is almost no mid to long range HE spam in ranked because, well, everyone is so stealthy, it's a lot of capture point fighting, and later on in the matches there's always a lot of close range brawling and stuff going on because everyone is so stealthy, you kind of pop up right next to the opponent. And the Ibuki really, really sucks in those kinds of situations because, well, the ship doesn't have any armor, 25mm gets overmatched by everything, HE penetrates it easily, torpedo angles are bad, uh, there's no real radar, no real impact, so, nope. Ibuki goes into the trash can, and the Izumo follows the same route. The Izumo also is on my bad list of ships. Uh, it's got such terrible base concealment that even with full stealth build, you got 12.9. And more importantly, the guns, gun accuracy is very inconsistent. Uh, it doesn't. It's a massive ship. It doesn't have the best torpedo belt. It doesn't handle that well. It really doesn't. And even worse, you have to give a lot of broadside to actually use all of your guns. And of course, the Izumo gets citadel quite easily at close range. So if it ends up being brawls, which it tends to often do towards the later parts or somewhat close range fights, the Izumo will suffer the hardest. Cannot recommend this one. 
Another, another ship that kind of stings to not be able to recommend is the Rune. And that's because I really like the Rune. I really enjoy it. I think it's a fun ship. But uh, once again, the concealment... Well, the concealment is okay, but it's not going to win any prizes. But more importantly, you really suffer when it comes to early game impact. The Rune, as with the Obuki, is really good at kiting away and spamming with the backwards facing turrets. And it's a good mid-range ship. It's a very, very good mid-range ship. But it doesn't really have any early game impact. It's it's hard it's hard to have any sort of early game impact. Sure, you can rush in with your um, Hydra Blazing. The German Hydra is pretty much the only saving grace that I think it will bring to this kind of gameplay. Uh, but you can still get melted so easily because, well, 27mm armor. 380mm armor shells won't overmatch you, but that doesn't mean like the likes of Kitakaza won't absolutely melt you, just sit in a smoke and spam you while everyone else spots you because your concealment is so bad. So, it won't have much of an impact. It, it got some D, it, like 2x4 YOLO torps, but that's pretty much it. Um, no, I don't see the rune performing particularly well because, well, you need ships that are able to have early game impact or they are very good at close range fights and rune isn't really either. Another one that naturally follows suit uh, is the St. Louis. St. Louis. Um, great long range, great, great mid range combatant, but close range? With this concealment and with this armor. And also, I mean, it's got spaced armor to troll a bit with, but ultimately, it's a long range kiting HE spammer. That's what it does best. And uh, that's not what you need for arms race, sadly, but that's just the way it works. It doesn't have that it doesn't have that impact you need. And more importantly, the French cruisers, um, they build in power the longer a game goes on. As I've also often mentioned that the French cruisers, um, they, you farm damage. And then you farm damage long enough that your damage starts to impact the outcome of the match. And then you win the game based on how much damage you've dealt and how much like effect you have had. But Arms Race is very snowball-y and it's early game impact that has such a huge, huge um effect on the outcome of the match and the St. Louis really lacks this. So this one goes into the bad section as well. Another two ships that I'm adding to bad, it's straight up not recommended. Once again, I don't think the St. Louis is a bad ship in randoms, but this is arms race, so different thing here. Tashkent, um, with, for the thing with the Tashkent is, it's a mid to long range once again, destroyer. It's really good at trading with other DDs at mid to long range. But how often are you going to be able to see DDs at mid to long range, especially later on in the game when they start picking up concealment buffs? Like, if you haven't played Arms Race, you've got to understand that these DDs will be running around with sub 5 kilometer concealment. And if you have to push up that close with this ship, well, first of all, you'll, you'll be spotted much sooner than anyone else, and you will be focus fired a lot. Uh, but even if you manage to get close enough that you're within like five kilometers and you can finally spot the en enemy destroyer and you can start nailing him, well, you're so close that every advantage you have, because Tashkent isn't exactly a DPM monster. It's really good at trading at range because of the fast shell velocity. But once you go into the super close range as well, then you have to deal with torps and you have to deal with... Um, the same even better DPM coming your way and you won't be able to dodge the shells because you have to get so close to actually land them or just to see the enemy. Sure you can rely on your teammates to spot them for you but it's once again the value of the Tashkent uh, especially especially later on in the games if both teams lose two DDs and you're left, left, left alone against the enemy DD and he outspots you by a couple of kilometers it's pretty much a GG. It's so hard to overcome that unless you got radar ships and such things. But still, Tashkent, not, not what I'll ever call a carry ship for arms race. And the Udaloi sadly suffers the same issue. Do I even have the Udaloi? No, but we can show the Udaloi. The Udaloi has the exact same issues. Um, very good mid-range mid destroyer gunboat, but doesn't have the concealment and doesn't really have the DPM or maneuverability for those super close range fights. So Udaloi is pretty agile, actually. Uh, it might do better than the Tashkent simply because it's more maneuverable, but it's not like I, I can recommend either ship for this anyway. So that was the what I would consider the not recommended for arms race. Now let's move on to the average ships. And when I say average, I mean ships that could go either way. Uh, it, depending on what kind of matchup you get, depending on how well your early game goes. These can, these can kind of swing 
they can they most of the time they will probably perform pretty okay but they can swing you can have a carry role or you can have a very a small role as well but i don't call i don't consider them inherently good or inherently bad for arms race our first example of a ship that can go either way is the chungmu um, if you run smoke, well then you're kind of just going to be, well you're going to be a Fletcher that can torpedo other destroyers, which is obviously a downgrade. But considering how much fighting there is over early game buffs and how important it is to secure them, you got to remember that uh, when you secure uh, arms race buffs, you don't need to sit in the camp for a full minute to secure it. No, no, all you need to do is quickly go into the cap when the timer hits zero. So the cap, you can pick up the, the buff. That's all you need to do. So. Even short duration radars have increased value if you can just bully the enemy destroyer out of the cap and then you can go in there and quickly grab it and then just bail. So for that kind of situation I consider the radar build Changmu to have uh, significant potential because well yes the radar is only 17 seconds you can probably increase it with the radar upgrade. But, but it's 7.5 kilometers and more importantly it's a bit easier to predict where enemy destroyers will be because well obviously they want to pick up the buffs. The buffs are so strong any good players will be focusing on picking them up as soon as possible. 10% extra concealment for a destroyer so powerful. 10% faster reload on both guns and torps incredibly powerful. So everyone you know where the enemy team is going to go. And you know if you, you can kind of sit outside the range of that enemy cap and then as the timer starts ticking down, well let's say it's 30 seconds until it's about to get capped, then you can start pushing in and radaring them. And your team opens up, they have to scatter, they have to flee and you can maybe even go in there and grab that, grab it. So the Chungmu has I think a lot of potential simply because it's a very, um, it probably going to be a fairly DD focused meta and there's so much capture control that's being focused on. So Radar Chengmu, in my opinion, I'm putting it in the, aver in the average section, and that's because there are some ships that are just so damn good at this. Uh, it goes into the average mostly because, well, it lacks, completely lacks any sort of smoke, of course, uh, and which means you will struggle to disengage if you get engaged upon when your radar is on cooldown, which can happen because of all the stealthy ships that will be available. Um, also, your torps can't hit destroyers, which is probably a pretty big problem because, as I mentioned, you know where the enemy DDs are going to be going, so you know where you want to torpedo. And that's why also Hydra has higher value on destroyers, but also being able to hit enemy destroyers has higher value. So Chungmu is kind of like a budget black, USS Black, kind of like a budget USS Black. Not quite as good, but still has a lot of potential. Another ship that I see as having a lot of potential, but won't necessarily isn't necessarily breaking into the top list of uh, ships is the Yugoma. The recent HE buff to IGN guns benefits it quite a lot since now the HE hits really hard and it's already a scarily stealthy ship. Uh, combined with the potential concealment buffs, especially a torpedo build, Yugoma can be brutal. Like, But once again, the issue will be there are multiple radar ships and more importantly there will be multiple radar and hydro dds and i mean if you consider the likes of Utland that can heal and hydro uh obviously the yugoma will struggle to have the same kind of massive impact on a match as that ship will because well the torpedo power goes out the window against the Utland and it will outtrade you and it will heal and it's also got good concealment not quite as good as the yugoma but rough rough fight regardless Still, the Yugoma won't be a bad ship, I think. A full stealth Yugoma is 5.5 km concealment. It can help you get some early early capture objectives. And all those torpedoes thrown at the caps, the torps are very fast. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see F3 memes because of the, all the improved concealment on both sides. Those F3 torps are rough to dodge because they are so damn fast. So, absolutely potential here. Um, Unlikely to be a top pick, but can still perform well. Another ship that I expect to actually perform well is a ship that I don't really like for random battles, and that's the Seattle. But even though I don't like it for random battles, it doesn't mean I can discount it, discount it for, um, for ranked. And that's mostly because it's got such good concealment. You slap, well this is without a captain, but you add captain on, but more importantly it's got a concealment of... Uh, what the hell was it? Do I need to put a captain on to remember what my concealment was? Do I have some convenient captain I can slap on it? And that's negative. Okay, we're gonna put one on it. 
The Seattle is a very stealthy ship. One second, let's throw some captain on this for the sake of the commentary. There we go. Note that you would obviously go IFA Chief as the first pick because that's how you get that improved gun power. But I'm picking concealment just to see what the concealment is. Conceal see, 9.4 km concealment. Damn, that is good. Now you consider the fact that your radar is uh, 9. All you need to do is pick up one concealment buff. One concealment buff and you are stealth radaring other you're still you're able to stealth radar if you manage to pick up multiple concealment buffs well you become a dd nightmare because of course hydro plus radar on a ship that has this much firepower is terrifying and can absolutely melt dds left right and center so seattle will have great potential in great potential for rank but you got to remember though that it's very squishy it's got that 25 millimeter armor it's got a fair chunk of citadel, it's slow at 33 knots, it doesn't really handle that well, it's notoriously slow on accelerating and decelerating, and uh, it's got really bad firing angles, which means you have to give a lot of broadside if you want to use your back guns. So it's got a lot of things dragging it down, but that's why I put it into, the, into this middle section, where it can swing either way. You can have a great game impact, or you can just get blapped really hard and not really have much impact at all. Especially, I think, the health pool. 44, not too bad. Still, though, uh, Seattle is one that can, can go either way, but you can absolutely have some great carry games because that radar potential is terrifying. Dimitri Donskoy is another one that kind of goes into the middle section. The Dimitri Donskoy suffers from being a long-range ship, just like the Ibuki and the Rune and the St. Louis that I mentioned earlier that I put into the bad section. The difference is, though, that the Dimitri Donskoy uh, has radar, and it's got that long-range Russian radar. And I mentioned just how strong early game, uh, how important that early game impact is. Well, Dimitri Donskoy does bring it. If you pick up enough buffs, it can po probably even become a top pick, but it will still struggle more than the Seattle because the base conceal is so bad. I mean, they did recently buff the firing angle, so you don't have to expose quite as much broadside, but it's still vulnerable to pretty much all damage. It's got that same 25mm armor, and it's got a large citadel. It's designed for longer range fighting. It's not designed for that close range fights, so it will suffer in those kinds of situations. Still, Radar will be strong because capture control is so important in arms race. Um, but the Nibitri Donskoy can't break up into the top picks, but I don't think he'll be in the lower picks either because radar is so damn powerful. Neptune is another one. This is kind of... Now, first of all, smoke is obviously going to be garbage. Um, your smoke firing penalty is 6.6 .6 kilometers, which means if you smoke up and you shoot and there's a DD within 6, within 6.6, .6, you will be spotted in the smoke. So obviously, any sort of smoke build Neptune is completely out the window. A smoke Neptune is going to be a bad pick, straight up a bad pick. But radar, 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 radar. Radar Neptune has potential. It's got 10.1 base conceal, and if you slot the radar on it, the radar is 9.45. So once again, it only takes one or two concealment buffs, and you usually get this fairly early in arms race. Uh, you, one or two of them picked up, and suddenly you're able to stealth radar in the Neptune. So that absolutely has significant potential, because this thing popping up next to a, well, near a cap and just shredding DDs is brutal, because the Neptune DPM against destroyers is so damn massive. Um, however, it will be harder to play than Radar Minotaur. It's not as agile, it's not as stealthy, it doesn't have the same kind of duck, same kind of turret setups. So it will be harder to play than Radar Minotaur. And for the average player, if you're just an average, literally 50% win rate dude, um, Neptune is probably not going to be your choice. But if you can make the Radar Neptune work, I think it has a lot of potential. Because, well, that super powerful heal, as long as you can avoid the Citadel, uh, it's going to be rough to deal with. It's really going to be rough to deal with. Absolutely has potential, but can't go into the top picks because it's so squishy and so vulnerable. Um, now we get to other, some of the battleships picks for mid-tier, aka average ships. And we can start with the Alsace. Alsace, well, general, it's really hard for a battleship to pick to make it into my top picks for this season of ranked. And that's simply because it is the capture control is so important. 
I mentioned this at the start of this commentary, being able to secure caps is such a valuable bonus to your team. However, the Alsace, well, it will, it can swing either way. It's got a tremendous amount of firepower, both HE and AP. Um, it's, I guess, decently fast. The concealment isn't going to win any prizes, but you can blap a lot of DDs, a lot of cruisers, a lot of the like. They, they miss, messed with the Sigma, but considering everything becomes closer range in arms race because of the concealment, 12 guns opening up on you is still a scary experience, especially when it pops up at mid-range instead of that normal long range you might expect. So Alsace goes into the average picks. Um, and the, uh, some of the premiums I'm going to put into the average picks is also the Sean Bart. Uh, you might have expected because it's a tier 9 free XP premium. Once again, this ship very, very good for randoms, but ranked, it suffers from all the battleship issues. It's also, well, a squishy armor. It's going to be farmed by HE, IFHE, special uh, Kitakaze and stuff, and Seattle's and all this thing. Uh, but more importantly, it's obviously going to be torped a lot and it's going to be outspotted, and it only has 380mm guns. Uh, it can work, but questionable. The reload booster does give it some additional value. And I think the Sean Bart has the potential to break into the top picks. If you manage to pick up a lot of reload buffs, for example, um, and you manage to pick up a fair bit of concealment buffs, so you can lower your concealment to something more competitive for arms race, Sean Bart absolutely has potential. But the major issue that the Sean Bart will, of course, face is that, well, people will no doubt bring a lot of Musashi to rank as well. Musashi is another one that's in my average section. It could swing either way. If the enemy brings a very heavy battleship composition, let's say a lot of Sean Barts uh, or Mizoris, then the Musashi will obviously have a chance to shine because if there's one thing the Musashi does really, really well, it's wreck enemy battleships because of that overmatch. However, Musashi suffers extremely hard in any sort of heavy DD comps because, well, it's not very good at punishing destroyers. The turret traverse is so painfully slow. If your guns are pointed to the left and the DD pops up far a bit to the right, by the time you've actually turned your guns, is probably undetected already. Um, HE isn't going to win any prizes, and in general, Musashi doesn't throw that many shells at the target. It throws a few very heavy shells, and most of the time you're going to have AP loaded. Um, and even if you have HE loaded, it's not really going to have that massive impact. Musashi is a mid to long range battleship. That's what it shines at. You don't really want to get into brawls because if you have to get in brawls, well, your big turning circle makes you, and slow rudder shift makes you vulnerable to torps and your vulnerable citadel. It doesn't make it, you good for brawling. It's a mid to long range ship. So just kind of like the Shan Bart depends on how many Musashi is, what are we actually facing, the Musashi depends on the same thing. It can't really be an automatic top tier because, well, if the enemy has doesn't have a lot of battleships, then the Musashi doesn't really have a lot it can counter. So an average pick that can swing either way. Amusingly, I actually put the Ayava in the same tier that the Musashi. And the reason for this is, even though, of course, I don't think they're equal, especially not in random battles, they're not equal, um, the Ayava has much, much better concealment at 12.2 kilometers, whereas Musashi has 13.5. Even with a bunch of concealment buffs, it's always going to be outspotted all the time, everywhere. Um, so this one might be a bit ske sketchy. Ayava might be actually worse. It might it might trend a bit lower, but considering I made these tiers so wide, like there's a, there's a lot of flexibility here, um, you shouldn't read too much into it. But I don't think an Ayava necessarily will be a bad pick. It will be a frustrating pick if the enemy has a Missouri, of course, but other than that, I don't think it's too bad. In fact, I even have the Lion in the same average tier. And that's once again because the Lion has such fantastic concealment and it's got such... Well, the Lion is actually really good at close range, which is one of the reasons why it fits into my average picks. Uh, I don't even have the Lion because obviously I don't rate it for random battles. But for this ranked type of gameplay, I mean 830 meter turning circle. Uh, it has practically no citadel because it's that UK design. So in, in a brawling situation against other battleships, the Lion is monstrously good because it can't be citadeled and it can citadel them easily. Um, super heal and great concealment. And not to mention, of course, this HE hits like an absolute truck. Uh, 
problems it has is questionable dispersion and bad firing angles, but get some concealment buffs going and that questionable dispersion isn't going to be that much of an issue. So the Lion is a ship that actually might be surprisingly good for arms race. Even though I actually don't like this ship for random battles at all, I can still see the potential this ship might bring for arms race. That was, I think, that was all the ships that go into my average section. Now, last, but of course not least, the ships I consider to pretty much always be a good pick. A top pick, these are basically my top picks for ranked. Uh, ships I expect to perform extremely well in the meta, and even if you don't have the best early games, these are ships that can still recover because they have so many strengths and advantages that they can turn games around. The only battleship to make it into this recommended section of ships is, of course, the Missouri. Good health pool, good guns, um, maneuverability is questionable, speed is good though, good detectability, which is something I rate very highly for arms race. But most importantly is, of course, the fact that you can slot radar and 9.45 km range with 35 second duration add in enough concealment buffs well and you're pretty damn close to stealth radaring. I mentioned how early that how important that early game uh, impact is and the Missouri brings it in spades because well it fulfills the role of a radar cruiser while at the same time being able to blap enemy radar cruisers. So you spot the ideas and you can blap any cruisers trying to contest your destroyers so you are such a incredibly powerful big brother for your DDs that enemies will struggle to deal with you and this is so powerful especially for that early game impact. So the Missouri and even if the game goes into the late game where other if you lose your DDs or whatever where other BBs are going to be completely helpless the Missouri can actually still have a big impact because of that radar and you got four charges so time them well and you can have a significant uh, impact on any part of the game early mid late. So Missouri absolutely in my into my recommended section when it comes to ships and the only battleship that I will add to my recommended section. We can move on to the destroyers next uh, because there's a fair few destroyers here. I mentioned I value DDs very highly for this season and that's of course because the caps are so important. The first one we're going to mention is the black. I actually don't have it. I'm not going to buy it either but that doesn't mean that I don't recognize all the advantages that the black will bring to this season of ranked. The main point is, of course, 20 second radar with uh, 7.5 km range. That is so, so powerful. That is so, so powerful. Uh, especially considering that the black is basically a Fletcher, so, but you also have smoke as well. So that means when it comes to contesting these caps, not only are you able to outspot enemies uh, uh, with radar, but if someone jumps you or whatever, you can smoke up and pick a fight with the radar afterwards. You, there's when it comes to DD versus DD trade and uh, map control, the, the black does it extremely well. Now it does have some issues though. Uh, torps are painfully slow. They hit hard, but they are painfully slow and you're gonna struggle to hit anything, basically any other destroyers, any cruisers, anything. You're gonna, you're gonna struggle to get much value out of those torps. So it's kind of bad against other ship types, but against other DDs, the black is amazing as long as you have your consumables available. So this is absolutely a top tier pick on my list as well. Other destroyer top tier picks is going to be the Youthland. It's very hard not to include this and, and just consider it an absolutely insane ship. Um, the concealment is 5.7, which is already amazingly good. The torpedoes are absolutely usable. 15.5 km. These are good torps. The cooldown is two minutes, sure, but I mean, 10 km range, 62 knots. These are good torpedoes. You can absolutely land them on on other DDs. The DPM is fantastic. You can spec you can spec IFHE to make life a lot easier with this ship, and just massive duck a massive dpm it struggles a bit to land shells long range but when it comes to fighting other destroyers you obviously don't need this you got a good health pool and then of course we got the fact that not only are you able to slot uh, both a heal but you also got hydro so you got hydro smoke and heal all on the same ship and when it comes to being able to bully other dds out it's hard to contest this kind of great concealment great firepower able to heal you can't really torp it and that makes it really good at pushing into these caps without being afraid of being torpedoed because you can push in with hydro active if someone picks a fight with you these smokes are optimal for securing these caps because they are very short duration 
but they also have a very short reload time. So you're basically gonna have a smoke available every time you go into a cap to fight other destroyers. You're always gonna have that smoke available. There's never a time where you're gonna be caught with your pants down like, whoops, no smoke for me. Um, so, so much flexibility, so much firepower. The Jutland, absolutely one of my top picks for this season. Another top pick is one I actually recently made a commentary on, and that is the Kitakaza. Now, while the Kitakaza doesn't have any amazing hydro, or, or doesn't have quite the same amazing smokes. Uh, this is without a captain. Where is actually my captain? Let's... Uh, uh, did I lose? I think I might have... Uh, I think I have a full captain on him or some other ship. Regardless though, the Kitakaze, well, if you watch my commentary, insane firepower. Absolutely insane firepower. It's got good damage on both guns. Well, fantastic damage on guns, decent torps, Good conceal, 5.8 I think it's with the full captain on it, and it's with adding buffs that add better conceal, adding DPM buffs on this thing, like it's already a monster, and more importantly, all the damage this ship deals uh, is with this improved penetration on these guns. So when you're running IFHE and you can pen 32mm, any sort of reload buffs, buffs translate as a direct damage buff. The Kitakaze is great against all ships. It's great against other DDs, it's great against cruisers, you can melt cruisers with this thing, you can melt battleships with this thing. Absolutely one of my top picks for this season as well. And the good old workhorse that will also be into my top picks is the Fletcher. Now, is is gonna struggle against the likes of Jutland and Kitakaze? Sure, but this ship is very, very agile. It's incredibly agile, it's decently fast, the torps are going to be one of its great strengths, I think. Uh, 81 second reload on these torpedoes, they hit like a truck, 10.5k in range, and the thing with uh, torps is that, combined with RPF especially, well, you're gonna see when the DDs go for the caps. And you know, you always know where to torp, because you know, you see those small capture, those small buff circles, you know that's where the DD is going to go. RPF is ticking, showing that he's actually sailing towards it. You preemptively launch torps. And you can do this every 80 seconds. And you only really need to land one of these torps to absolutely cripple an enemy destroyer. So, more than anything, the torpedo power is one of the reasons, the reasons the Fletcher goes into my top picks. Now, that doesn't mean I consider it straight up uh, equal to something like the Jutland. I think the Jutland is a better pick. But as I mentioned, these, this entire section is basically ships that I won't mind seeing on my team at all. Ships that I will consider good additions to my team, uh, regardless of what point of the match we're at. So, quite won't be quite as amazing as the Jutland, or maybe not quite as amazing as they said, uh, as the Kitakaze, but still is going to be a very strong ship. Another one of these destroyers that I think will perform very well is surprisingly the Z46. Now, I don't actually like the Z46 that much for random battles, because I think it struggles from the fact that it's got 5.9 game concealment, uh, but then it only has a hydro range of 5. So you got this 900 meter buffer. But in arms race, well, <laughs> there, there's going to be a lot of concealment buffs. There's always a lot of concealment buffs. And uh, suddenly you're going to end up with maybe 5 game concealment, maybe even less but you're gonna have that 5km Hydro available. So what the Z46 does is neutralize the concealment of every other destroyer. And more importantly, if you do spot them with it, well, you can smoke up and you can just absolutely shred them because you got that um, Hydro plus uh, smoke combination. And as I mentioned in the past as well, Hydro plus smoke is so strong for securing objectives and arms race is basically one long fight for the objective type of fight. That's all you do. You go from buff to buff to buff to buff. You secure objective after another. And the Z46 is one of the best ships at this. So Z46 is another ship I think will have a lot of potential. Not just protecting itself with this Hydro, but it's also going to bail out a lot of uh, DD teammates. Because you know those DDs that push into a cap and then they park full broadside in their smoke? Yeah, the Z46 is going to help those guys a lot just by running Hydro and saving them from eating all those broadside torps. So, this is a DD with some great potential. Not quite as strong as, I'd say, something like uh, Jutland Kitagaza Black maybe, but still absolutely one of the top picks, and especially late game, when concealment buffs kick in, the Hydro will be terrifyingly strong. Now we get to the cruisers that I'm including into this, these top picks. There's actually only one silver cruiser that I'm including, and that is the Buffalo. Now if I could stop being blind and find it. There we go. The Buffalo. I love the Buffalo. So there might be some bias here. But the Buffalo is a ship I actually expect to perform quite well. 
10.5 km concealment and 9.45 km radar means it doesn't take many concealment buffs uh, to be picked up to unlock stealth radar on it. It also has an 8 km smoke firing penalty, which is honestly kind of strange, but more importantly, it excels in closer fights. That super heavy American AP with improved penetration angles can be devastating to both cruisers and battleships alike, and a 12 gun volley of HE will still hurt uh, DDs very, very hard. Add to the fact that it's got 47.8k health, which is means it's one of the tankiest silver cruisers just behind the Ruin. Uh, and unlike the likes of, for example, the Ibuki and the Seattle, who both have 25mm armor, the Buffalo actually has. 27 millimeter armor everywhere. Now it won't save it against the likes of Missouri, Musashi, whatever, but for example, Jean Bart can be no tanked without issues. So this thing is going to, and of course it gives it some additional protection against HE. So this thing I think is going to perform surprisingly well because, well, <laughs> Any other, there's not many cruisers that want to fight a buffalo at close ranges because, especially if the buffalo gets the jump on them, you can get an instant devastating with this AP broadside. The AP broadside is devastating. 12 of these super heavy American shells shot at something like 10 kilometers when you get the concealment gun. Uh, add in the radar uh, potential, add in the fact that the citadel on this thing isn't actually that large. It's honestly a pretty small section of the ship that is citadel. So, you got a lot of surprising tankiness and firepower coming out of this ship. It suffers usually in random battles because, well, the range is kind of questionable, especially if you run reload mod like I do, so you don't really get many opportunities to use these close range uh, uh, capabilities. But in arms race, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities. So absolutely one of, one of my, my only silver ship pick for uh, top tier this season. Other top tier picks I expect is Alaska. Basically, everything that makes the buffalo great is pretty much even greater on the Alaska. Higher health pool, this massive AP, massive AP firepower, the fact that it can radar, the concealment is quite okay. You're gonna need some concealment buffs, but unlike many other cruisers, even if you get spotted, you're unlikely to melt that quickly because, well, you got so much damn health. You can, of course, slot hydro and radar, and then you got that heal. The radar, it is... High, the, Armor is 27 on the nose, but more importantly, you got 36 in the middle. So besides the nose being overmatched, you can bounce a fair bit of shells as well. Alaska is... I consider both the Alaska and Kronstadt to be overpowered for tier 9 cruisers, so obviously the Alaska is going to be a top pick, especially because it brings radar to the table. And for that same reason, the Kronstadt is also going to be a top pick. Um, it doesn't quite have that same armor profile. It's more vulnerable to that big AP overmatch, but on the other hand, it's got 71k health and it's got that long range 11.7km radar. It, once again, doesn't take many concealment buffs to be able to stealth radar in this thing. And, uh, well, I mean, if the enemy brings something like a Donskoy or a Nibuki and your team brings a Kronstadt, yeah, there's a reason there's a pretty big difference in power rankings here. Kronstadt and Alaska for obvious reasons. These are super powered tier 9 cruisers. I don't really think they... I mean, when, when I compare them, I often compare them to tier 10s because that's how powerful they are. So obviously these are going to be my top picks. I'm pretty sure I went through all the ships. If I forgot someone, I have no, absolutely no doubt in my mind that chat or you guys in the comments will let me know. But these are my recommended recommendations for the upcoming ranked season. Someone in chat will probably make a nice list with timestamps to every single ship and so forth. So you guys get a more easier way of watching this because as usual, these things tend to end up being really, really long. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will talk to you guys later.